Hello and welcome to my channel where we may be dazed, but we are not confused. We are going to do a Find Your Oasis reading for the sign of Cancer. So the purpose of this reading is to help you find some inspiration and insight into a situation that may feel like you are stuck in a barren place. It may seem as if you are wandering in a desert. And for me, that metaphor is really about being in a place that might be hot, uncomfortable. There may not be a lot of water around in order to quench yourself emotionally um, or psychologically, maybe even. Um, and this is just to kind of offer some type of motivation to continue forward on your journey as you try to find an oasis in the midst of some difficult or trying circumstances. Um, as they say, trouble doesn't last always, but when you're smack dab in the middle of it, it certainly can feel as if that is not true. So we're going to take a look at why you are experiencing a desert situation what it may feel like for you, what you can learn through these circumstances, what steps you could take to get on the path to finding some type of relief or coming into a situation that feels like an oasis, and then what that actual oasis will possibly feel like for you. So um, Cancer, it looks like the reason that you are experiencing a desert situation or feeling as if you are wandering in a desert is because you were very um, emotionally attached to some sort of situation. It could have been a partnership. It could have been an outcome to something. And you were waiting for a long time for this to pan out. Um, this could have even been like a job that you were passionate about that you really wanted to get. And you were waiting to hear something back and you just kind of didn't. And I feel like because you were so passionate about it and you put so much of your heart into it, it may have put you into a place where you may not have been honoring yourself at the level that you might have needed to. And so what happened, it looks like, is that you decided to put yourself first and to really value and cherish your own heart and your own feelings about the situation by no longer waiting for whatever this was that you're waiting to come in um, to happen. You're no longer waiting for that. And I feel like because you did that, you may have prevented a lot more of suffering in the form of waiting for something to happen that wasn't going to happen. But because you've done that, you also feel like you've cut off that hope that this particular thing was going to pan out, especially if you put a lot of energy and a lot of like emotional, you know, expectation into it. It can feel like you are in a dry place right now. All right. So the feeling that you're having in this space is one of just not being happy. I feel like you are you feel as if you're not really abundant. You're not able to bring in the things that you want that can bring you true happiness. This 10 of cups situation. Um, I have the 10 of cups in reverse, the Empress in reverse, and then the wheel of fortune. So with that, uh, it almost feels as if you're thinking that this could just be your fate. Like maybe this is not for me. Maybe I'm not supposed to be in a situation where I feel um, nurture, sustained. I feel emotionally validated. I feel as if um, I've got all of the things that will help make me feel as if I am in my happiest place or in a joyful place in this world. Um, and so that's kind of a heavy feeling to have, you know, but this is rooted from the sense of kind of taking your power back and stating that you are not going to place yourself in situations and be holding on to something in almost a, a delusional way um, because it's not coming in. It's recognizing that something was not quite going to work the way you wanted it to or that you needed it to for your personal well-being. And because of that, kind of the after effect of that is that feeling of barrenness or feeling like you're not able to um, be abundant or that the seeds that you plant don't come to fruition and things like that and feeling like this is a cycle so with the wheel of fortune card um it seems as if you might be feeling as if this is cyclical that this always happens to you all right that you put a lot into things and then you find out that it's not quite what it is 
that you were expecting or what you would have liked to have gotten out of it. You end up feeling, um, I don't want to say dejected, but I feel as if you, you just feel as if at the end of the cycles of pouring into and trying to create a harvest, you don't get that. All right. So, um, I'm also picking up though, that you could also be feeling with this wheel of fortune, that this is the end of a cycle for you because you are no longer going to wait around for things that are clearly not going to go in the direction that you might like them to go, that this could be the end of the cycle for you in placing yourself in these types of situations. And because of that, you're kind of feeling that after effect of like weaning yourself off of that emotional um, core that you kind of have tied into whatever the situation may have been for you. All right. So what are you supposed to learn in this place? So the card that I pulled for you from the Mystical Shaman Oracle deck is water. And so it's very fitting. I feel like the Queen of Cups and then also this water card for me is very much speaking to the sign of cancer. So let's take a look and see what the book has to say because I feel like it has such great insights. I want to give that to you directly. So I will be reading from that. It says the essence of the card is that water symbolizes purification, regeneration, birth, revival, and cleansing. It signifies an evolutionary shift from former self to new self. Many myths around the world speak of a great flood and the new life that is revealed after a deluge. Water begins without boundaries. Then, as soon as form has separated itself from water, it comes under the laws of time and life, thus acquiring limitations. The invitation is that when water arrives, you are invited to watch your emotions. Know that they are going to be changeable and do not settle on a conclusion at this time. If you feel joy, feel that fully. If you feel sad, allow sadness to move through you. Water invites you to see the ebb and flow of events and trust that you can ride the wave of opportunity when it arises. Natural flow is here. Go with it. The medicine for healing is that this is a time for cleansing unwanted energy and sticky feelings. Consider this. When water does to the what water does to the flesh, it does in sacred ritual to the spirit. The spiritual cleansing, like baptism, is the opportunity to get an instantaneous experience of the timeless non-ordinary reality in which all true creation takes place. Now is also a time that is pregnant with potential for you. Carl Jung talked about the maternal, womb-like significance of water as a universal symbol. Water represents the potentiality of existence. It precedes and sustains every creation. Emergence from it is manifestation. Immersion in it is dissolution of form. Because of this, it symbolizes regeneration. Make way for the process. You can expect it to be messy, but worth it. All right. So the next card I have for you is a feather card. And the purpose of this is to offer insight on what types of things that you can look for that can lead you to a path of some type of peace or healing, integration of the experiences that you've had as well. Um, and so the, the type of feather you have is the crane card. And it says, you will soon enter into a beneficial partnership. Luck and longevity bless this union. So let's look at what it says for that as well. Crane is a uniquely shaped bird with a long beak and long legs. It is commonly associated with fidelity and marriage. In Asian cultures, the crane is a messenger of longevity and healing, as the great bird is believed to have the ability to fly up to the heavens. The Zuni tribe regards the crane as the keeper of, of a great secret magic. The crane's call is distinct and loud 
warning those around them to watch out and pay attention. Crane is a water bird that will teach you to work with the element of water, which is feminine, emotional, and adaptable. Crane sounds the call to empowering your relationships. The time is coming for forming a new partnership that will be supportive and long lasting. This union may be something you have been seeking or it may take you by surprise. Crane urges you to pay attention to those stepping forward into your life at this time. Be sure to use your emotional intelligence to see where you stand and what you are attracting. Is it for your highest good? If it is, take the leap of faith and go for it. You are in the right place to create a union that is perfect for you now. So the energies that you would work with with this feather are longevity, creation, and union. All right. And the season all year round and the elements are water and air. Colors could be white and gray. Your affirmation is that I am now ready to embrace and trust my divine partnerships. All right. So your oasis that you are moving towards in this situation, this dry place that you are in, is a place where you feel like you are willing to fight for the things that you value, and most importantly, to fight for yourself and the light within yourself and, and to honor that within yourself, should you find that it is not being reciprocated or respected in a certain situation or allowed to shine brightly. So the card we have is, I will fight. So let's read and see what the message is for that. It says, firmly, I stand with sword and shield, not backing down, but fighting for the light and for those who cannot fight for themselves, right? So, Overall, it feels as if you are definitely moving into a space where the efforts that you've made in the past that may have felt cyclical, that may have felt like they were falling upon barren soil. Um, I'm picking up the parable of um, the farmers who were trying to sow seed. Some seed fell on fertile soil. Some seed fell on rocky soil and barren soil and the resulting effects of that. And obviously when you have seeds that are placed on rocky, barren soil, you're not going to get a lot of vegetation that's able to grow because it can't germinate. First of all, it has to be able to get into the soil. Once it's in the soil, there needs to be nutrients that can support the growth of that seed. You need to have water. And so if there's no water there, no motions there to sustain it, it's not gonna grow. And I feel like you're moving from a place of maybe not being able to recognize the difference between fertile soil and barren soil, but through a certain level of experience that you've had to learn, kind of the school of the heart knocks, definitely. Um, it's really helped you to understand what that looks like for you. And I feel like as a nurturing person, um, a person who's very much moving from a heart realm and very much in touch with your emotions and tries to be nurturing, particularly of situations that may not be the best situation for you. You might have been unduly attracted to situations that did not have the ability to sustain the type of growth that you would have liked to have seen. But because you've gone through this space and you've experienced this, um, especially if it's been cyclically, um, that cycle, it, it appears as coming to an end and the lessons that you've learned about your emotions on both sides, not just the negative emotions, but also the positive ones that you feel. I feel like you've learned that they're not always permanent and they ebb and flow just like the water, just like the tide. But what you're finding is that you're going to come into a space where you're going to find uh, people who are going to reciprocate the energy that you put out, um, environments that reciprocate the energy that you put out. And the more that you stand in your own power and fight for yourself and stand up for yourself, even if nobody else is, you will be more likely to find yourself attracting in and also moving towards situations that are going to better reflect what it is that you're actually wanting to get back. 
All right, Cancer, that is what I have for you. And I hope that it was very helpful. Um, I will hopefully see you on the next video. Thank you for joining me on this channel where we may be days, but we are not confused. Until next time, bye-bye.